Hi friends, welcome back to 10 Minute Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain an awesome fantasy adventure film from 2020 titled, Love and Monsters. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with Joel Dawson, narrating to us the current state of the world. He says that his life was normal, like any of us, until the end of the world. It all started when a huge asteroid named Agatha 616 was heading straight to Earth. Humanity came together, and sent several rockets to destroy the asteroid before it hit the Earth, and succeeded. The asteroid was gone, however, the rockets were destroyed too. The radioactive material in the rockets rained back into Earth causing all cold-blooded animals to mutate. So now there are huge ants, roaches, crocodiles, lizards, and many other huge animals who attack humans. The animals immediately started killing people. And within about a year, 95% of the human population was wiped out. The ones who survived hid in bunkers, caves, and panic rooms. The surviving humans have been living in such places for the last seven years, and one of them is Joel. He lives in a bunker with other members. The tiny place doesn't provide room for privacy, so Joel complains about two of the members having sex right beside him, as he pretends to sleep. Joel tells us that everyone in the bunker is a couple, except for him. Their first baby was born last summer. They have established their own lifestyle vastly different from how it was outside the bunker. Joel's day-to-day -day life includes milking the cow and cooking food. They have a hunting party every month, in which some members of the group go up and bring whatever food they can. Joel writes letters to Amy, his girlfriend before he lived in the bunkers. That day, Joel is practicing hitting targets when the lights in the bunker start to flicker. Everyone starts to pack their weapons to go out. A mutated animal is in the area. Joel asks them if they want his help, but the group tells him to stay in the bunker. He is a liability for them, because Joel cannot fight. The team then leaves to find and kill the animal. Joel and a few others stay at the bunker. They monitor the group through a device, and see that one of the team is killed by the monster. Joel gets a crossbow and goes to help them. One animal has slipped into the bunker. Joel sees it and freezes. Although he has plenty of chances to kill it, he doesn't move at all. The animal is about to attack him, when the others from behind him kill it. Cut to seven years ago, the day the asteroid was destroyed. Joel and his girlfriend Amy are in a car hanging out. He draws a picture of Amy, and she gives him a box of colors as a gift. As they kiss, the emergency alarm goes off in the city. Just then the pieces of rocket fall back onto the city creating huge explosions. The two drive back home quickly. After they had come home, everyone was packing their bags to leave for a safe place. The two hug for the last time, separated that day, and have not met ever since. She lives in another colony a few miles away. Seven years later, Joel still has the box of colors that he uses to draw the monster animals on his notepad. That day, Joel speaks to her through a radio system. The two talk about the letters that Joel writes to Amy every day. But the call cuts off midway. Others from the team mourn the death of their team member. Suddenly, Joel asks the team about Amy's colony. It turns out that it is only 85 miles away. It takes seven days to reach there. Joel is determined to find Amy this time. The team members are surprised because they know Joel cannot fight. They try to persuade him to stay, but he packs his bag with all the necessities and leaves the bunker for the first time. He looks at the map, but cannot figure out anything in it. He even can't tell what direction is west. So, Joel takes a chance and heads in a random direction. He walks for a while, thinking that the journey is not as bad as he expected it to be. On his way, he encounters several monster eggs, but tries to stay positive. He finds a frisbee on the ground and keeps it with him. Just then, he hears a noise nearby. The team members had advised him to run and hide instead of fighting the creatures. So, Joel goes into a nearby house. It is empty as expected. Curious, he opens the fridge and sees a creature there, he immediately rushes back outside. He ends up in front of a small pond. A tentacle peeks out of it. Joel freezes like he does when he is scared. Suddenly, a huge mutated frog comes out of the pond. But Joel doesn't move. It attacks Joel with its tongue making him fall to the ground. A dog jumps on top of him out of nowhere. Just as Joel is about to run, the frog catches his legs with its tongue, and drags him towards them. The dog saves Joel from the frog, and they both run to a nearby van. It seems to be the dog's home. Joel notices Boy written on the ceiling in figures that it is the dog's name. That night, he stays with Boy in the van. The following morning, he draws the dog in his notepad thanking him for saving his life, and continues his journey. Boy follows him with his owner's dress. It is the only way Boy can still be close to his owner. Joel keeps the dress in his backpack and starts walking with Boy. The two become best friends on their journey.
Boyd protects Joel from eating poisonous berries and other dangers, while Joel tells him everything about his life. One day, as they walk, Joel falls into a pit. The pit has several burrows inside it. A worm monster called the Sand Gobbler comes out from one of the holes and attacks him. Just then, two survivors throw him a rope and bring him out of the pit. Several worm monsters attack him as he climbs up. The survivors are a man named Clyde Dutton and his eight-year-old friend, Minnow. Minnow throws an explosive in the pit and kills the rest of the monsters. As the two strangers continue their journey, Joel and Boy follow them for safety. It turns out that Minnow's father and Clyde's son were killed by a monster, and they have been together since then. The duo is heading towards the north now, where fewer monsters live due to the cold climate and higher elevation. Joel decides to be with them until they have to part ways. Suddenly, everyone freezes as they come across a huge snail. Clyde makes Joel take his shirt off and gives it to the snail. His shirt had the smell of sand gobblers in them, which attracted other monsters. Now the snail will spread it through the jungle and help them confuse the monsters. The snail slowly leaves. Minnow teaches Joel that like the snail, some creatures are actually nice. For the next two days, they teach Joel to shoot a crossbow in the right direction and other survival skills. Joel draws every monster they come across. The day finally comes when they have to part ways. Minnow insists he come with them to the north, but Joel has to find Amy. Clyde gives Joel a grenade as a parting gift. As Joel and Boy continue heading west, Boy suddenly feels something is wrong and hides. Joel tries to bring him out. But before he can, he is attacked by a huge centipede monster, like the one he had encountered in the bunker. This time, Joel manages to point his crossbow at him but freezes right after. The monster throws him away with its tail and surrounds Boy. Joel lies on the ground, thinking of the day his parents died. With much determination he gets up and shoots at the monster, killing him. He finally saves Boy, and the two celebrate. That night, they stay at a motel where they encounter a talking robot named Mavis. The robot has 51 minutes of battery left. Joel asks her if she has a working outlet that he can use his radio on. Mavis offers her remaining battery to him. Joel finally contacts Amy, who is worried about him. She tells him that her colony is leaving for a new place very soon. They have found another group of survivors who plan to take them somewhere safe. Before she can tell him where they are going, the power runs out. Joel brings Mavis outside and talks to her about his feelings. The robot shows him the picture of his family through its database. She plays a song for them, when suddenly her battery dies. Boy and Joel continue their journey the following day. As they walk, they encounter a queen sand gobbler. Clyde had warned them about her being the most dangerous of them all. The queen attacks them and chases them through the woods. Joel and Boy hide by a river. However, Boy gets scared and starts barking, giving away their position. Boy's owner's dress falls into the river which makes him get out of hiding. The queen finds their location, but before she can attack them, Joel uses the grenade to kill her. He falls into the water before the explosion. When he gets out of the water, he finds several leeches latch onto his body. He screams at Boy for giving away their location earlier. Saddened, Boy runs away from him. Joel now walks alone, but the leeches seem to have poisoned him with something. He gets lightheaded and starts to hallucinate. Just then, a group of people appears before him. He opens his eyes to see Amy in front of him. Amy is surprised to see him too. The two kiss, but Joel falls unconscious soon after that. When he wakes up, he is in a bunker. Amy greets him, as it turns out that he had kissed an old man earlier. The two are talking, when Amy is called by another older woman. After her parents died, Amy has been in this colony taking care of the elderly people there. She is the head of the colony as the elders depend on her. They live on a beach. Joel goes outside and sees the beautiful view. Several people are packing to leave the place. Another group of survivors had approached Amy's colony. Their leader, Cap, had promised to take them to a safer arena, so now they are packing to leave. Joel meets Cap who is preparing for a party at night. Cap brews his own beer which is the attraction of the party. Later that day, Amy confesses she is glad to see Joel, but has no romantic interest in him. She has grown into a different person now and is mourning the death of a close one, suggesting that she was together with someone else all these years before he died. Joel is devastated, and apologizes to her for not asking before coming to see her. Amy assures him that it is okay, and invites him to join their colony. However, Joel decides to return back to his colony and contacts them through the radio. His friends are happy and surprised to find out he is alive. They inform him that the bunker is no longer safe for them, and that they are planning to leave soon. The phone cuts off midway. Joel then notices the berries and beer kept beside him by one of Cap's friends. 
He sees that the berries are poisonous, the one that boy had warned him about earlier. Joel realizes that Cap and his crew are planning to poison the other survivors. He goes out to tell Amy but she is too drunk to understand. Just then, someone hits him on the head and he falls unconscious. The following morning, Joel wakes up to him tied up on the beach. The others are in the same condition. Cap reveals that he and his crew are actually pirates who raid colonies for food and fuel. He summons a crab monster rigged with a makeshift electric collar to eat the colonists. They also use the crab to tow their yacht. As the crab attacks them, Amy frees herself and Joel. She runs to fight the crew and leaves Joel to fight the monster crab. Amy fights with the girl member of the crew. Joel surprisingly manages to push the crab over. But Cap electrocutes the crab and it hits Joel making him fall unconscious. The crab then walks towards Joel as he retreats. Just then, Boy comes to his aid. As Dana aims to shoot Boy, Amy hits her, making her shoot the crab instead. Cap's crew runs to the boat and gets back on their yacht. The crab is about to kill Joel when he looks at its eyes and notices that it is actually a friendly animal. It had gone wild because Cap electrocuted it. So, Joel shoots at the chain that electrocutes it which makes the crab docile again. It leaves the beach and goes to Cap's yacht to kill all of them. Later that day, Joel packs his bag to get back to his colony to help them. He gives his book of monsters to Amy as a parting gift, and they kiss their goodbye. We see Joel survive the seven-day journey back to the bunker with Boy. He finally meets his friends again. They too decide to head to a safe place in the mountains. On the radio, Joel inspires other colonies to come out to the surface. Proving that life outside is still possible. In the end, we see many colonies head towards the mountains to live a better life. Clyde and Minnow are already there, while Joel and Boy are also heading towards the mountain, trying to survive the next journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did, subscribe if you're new. And at last, I'll say stay well, stay safe, thanks.